Welcome to Operation Solid Lives. This is level one, the first lesson, and I am excited to share this time with you. You are embarking on one of the most incredible discoveries from the very first chapter of the Bible to the last chapter of Revelation. You're going to find out how much God loves you, how much he has intended you to have a relationship with him. And I want to just start with something kind of broad, in, and that is I want to talk about the universe for a moment, because this universe that our little planet Earth is in tells us of God's great plan and his great detailed uh, creation of you and also how he sustains our lives. Uh, Disney Productions put a movie out in 2009 called Earth. And James Earl Jones um, did the narration on it, and I'm going to try to imitate him a little bit here. But he said in one point of the movie, of all the planets in our universe, we know of only one that can support life. It's called Earth. Just the right distance from the sun, it is a perfect climate to support our lives. Earth rests at exactly an angle of 23 and a half degrees to the sun, Without that crucial tilt, everything as we know it would be different. Well, those little details aren't by accident. I don't care what science has taught, and uh, there's a lot of brilliant people in the science fields, but they uh, deny that there was a creator. Many of them don't believe in God at all. Well, I'm here to tell you this is not by accident, and you know what? You're not by accident either. This earth was created with great intention, and so are you. The word says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, one of the arguments that we hear a lot about these days is because the universe is so huge that there has to be the possibility of life somewhere else in our universe. And a book that was written a few years ago called The Privilege Planet actually is written by two astrophysicists, Guillermo Gonzalez and J.W. Richards. They, these men raise a strong argument against this notion that there's life somewhere else. Um, listen to what they actually say in their book. They identify 20 indisputable factors which are absolutely necessary for a planet to sustain and support the complex life that you and I have. They attach a mathematical uh, probability of life happening on another planet at one in one quadrillionth. That's a one with 15 zeros behind it. Now, I'm a preacher. I'm not a scientist and I'm not a mathematician, but that's a pretty big number. And the odds of life happening, they're putting at one one thousandth of a trillionth. The point being is that there's all these numerous essential factors that are required to sustain life. And this is not happening by just chance. Here's the question I want to ask you. How did all these factors come about? How did we get here? Well, let's start with the first chapter of the Bible. How about that? And I bet you know it. In the beginning, what? God created the heavens and the earth. And we're told that he created this extraordinary planet and he brought it into existence. He spoke it into existence and it was not an accident. We didn't come from monkeys as some of these smart people are trying to purport. Now, I heard that one time that we didn't come from monkeys and I thought of a story where a, a kid had come home from school and he, he said, Mom, where did we come from? And she said, well, God made us, honey. And so then he went in and asked his father, Dad, where, where, did, where did we come from? Well, the dad said, well, son, we, I, we came from monkeys. So the little boy came back to his mom and he was kind of confused. And he said, Mom, Dad said we came from monkeys. Mom looked at the little boy and she said, where his family came from and where my family came from are two different questions. <laughs> I love it. What I want to show you is that right from the very first chapter of the Bible, how God not only powerfully, creatively, intentionally, but lovingly created you. 
Listen to Genesis 1. In fact, I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Genesis 1, and let's go to the third verse. Okay, Genesis 1. Let's find verse 3. Listen to this. It says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Verse 4 says, And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. So here's what we're being told. We're being told here that God made day and night. Now, I don't know if that seems all that special to you, but I love light. I, I like the sun when it comes up in the morning, it, and I like darkness too. It's hard to sleep when it's light out. Um, in fact, I'm having a hard time sleeping past sunrise these days. But sunrises actually are created, they can prove this. I've talked to a doctor at Scripps Clinic uh, who's in charge of the, the Sleep Institute there, uh, Dr. Klein. And he told me that the blue in the sky actually triggers certain uh, chemicals in your body that brings you to awake. It brings you uh, life. And at night, the, the darkness causes other chemicals to be released that cause you to get sleepy. So here we are already in the first chapter, chapter one, and just the first few verses, we're finding out God created heaven and earth, but he also created day and night, and a day to enjoy with life, and a night to enjoy with sleep. That's a wonderful thing. So what I'm showing you here is that this is not only powerful, what he did, it's loving. Now let's, let's go on a little bit further here. I want to go to verse six. Can you go to verse six with me? He said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Verse seven, thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second days. Now, here we are getting back to a little bit more of a science uh, aspect of this, scientific aspect, because there's such a balance between the nitrogen in our air. I, I was just reading this the other day. It was 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% carbon dioxide. Why? So that we can breathe easily. We don't have to breathe with wheezing or like making some strange noise. You can, in fact, just do that with me right now. Just take a breath. Isn't that wonderful? God created you with that in his mind that you could do that easily. Oh, and I thank the Lord for lungs that breathe in when you have a cold or you have some kind of infection. You, you start to feel that struggle. Well, God knew that you would need to breathe correctly, and he balanced the atmosphere even to do that. So he's not just making it so you survive. He's making it so you thrive. What a blessing. Let's, let's go on. Let's go to verse 11, Genesis 1, verse 11. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and so it was. Verse 12, And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. He saw that it was good. Not just that it was made, but that it was good. Now, I want to tell you, food was something God created. And I, I, I know there's some food I bet you like. How about a carne asada burrito? Do you like that? Yeah, that's the best thing in the world in my mind. But that flavor that you like, what, whatever it is, that wasn't by accident. God knew you would like that taste. He knew that you would like, maybe some of you like chocolate. God knew you'd like chocolate and also knew that you'd have to go exercise a little bit too because chocolate puts a little... Well, so does a carne asada burrito, but that's a whole nother story. But he created food so that you would enjoy it. Let me ask you something. Why do you think a kiwi or how about a banana or how about a good apple? You ever had a really good apple? I mean, where I grew up in the Northwest, 
I would go up and climb in apple trees and just sit and eat apples. And they were so delicious. Why is that? God knew it. He knew that you would love that apple so much, or you would love that carne asada burrito so much, uh, that you would actually enjoy it. God made things for your enjoyment. Isn't that powerful? Now, one of the things he made, that may not seem like it's something for you to enjoy, but time is an interesting thing. God created time. Listen to verse 14. It says that, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide day from night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and for years. Well, I I can tell you there's times that I wish wouldn't go away. For instance, our time right here together. I I wish this could go on for a long time. And since we've got about five hours here together, it's going to be, I'm just kidding. We only got about 30 more minutes, but God knew that there would be a beginning to a season and an end to a season. And I'm thankful that there are some seasons in my life that are over. Uh, There's some seasons I miss, but God has seasons coming that are good. And he's got something in store for you. Why? Because he created time. He knows the days that you've been appointed. He's got that all planned out. Isn't that wonderful? Now, what? why am I telling you all this? Because I want you to see the intentionality that God's had in creating you. You're not an accident. His hand has been very intricately involved in your creation. Now, as we go on here, in verse 16, it says, God made two great lights, and these great lights were to rule the day, and the lesser light was to rule the night, so he made stars also. I've had the opportunity this last year, my friend uh, who pastors in Cedar City, Utah, Pete Akins, is a blessing to me. He runs the ski school at Brian Head, and I've had the opportunity to go up and help instruct. I'm a pretty good skier, and I, I enjoy it. And I was up there one night with Pete. We got out of his truck, and we, he just said, look up. And I'm going to tell you, I looked up in the sky, and uh, it blew my mind. I, I mean, the, the unbelievable clarity of the Milky Way. And you could see satellites going by, and there was planes flying, and, and a falling star. And uh, it took my breath away. I, I could almost get choked up about it right now. Why, why is that beautiful? Is that just by chance? See, God created that because he knew you would enjoy it. He knew that Joel Phillips would get out of a truck in Cedar City, Utah, and his buddy would say, hey, look up. And I'd look up and I, and I almost can't even imagine what how gorgeous that was. God created that. He knew you would like stuff. He knew I would like stuff. So here we go. All the intentionality, all the power in his creation, all of the dynamics that were involved. Imagine when... when He was creating this universe. Ah, but it's also the love of God in the creation process. That's what I want you to see. Oh, isn't this great? Now, we're told here in verse 20. Look at verse 20. We're still in Genesis chapter 1. It says, Then God said, Let let the waters abound with abundance, and let them be abounding with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament, Uh, And so God created, verse 21 tells us, a great sea creatures and every living thing that moves and uh, also with which waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that that was good. Have you ever gone to a big aquarium? We've got a couple in California and uh, I'm telling you, you got to go. You just need to go and see what things look like underwater. Have you ever seen a seahorse? <laughs> so that's just an accident, huh? That little seahorse, it actually looks like a horse. And how it swims, I don't know. It's the cutest thing in the world. And the other fish that they've got in some of these places are just amazing, beautiful, not by chance. God created them, but here's what I want you to realize. He created that little seahorse, for instance. Or how about this? I was thinking about this the other day. You ever seen these little sea otters? They are so adorable. 
and they get these uh, sea urchins and they break open the parts of the sea urchin so they can eat the inside of the sea urchin. They do it on their little chests and I, I don't know, they're just the cutest thing in the world. Why is that? Why are they cute? Because God knew that I would think they were cute. He knew that you'd like that. Well, how about your dog? <laughs> you have a dog you like or had a dog you love? I'll tell you what, God knew that that dog would be a special friend for you. He knew that that dog would be a buddy. So God created dogs because he knew we'd like them. Now the devil created cats, but that's a, a, whole, that's a whole nother story. But no, honestly, I like cats too. But God created these things with that intention, with that intention of pleasing us, of having us enjoy things. Let's go on a little bit further here. Uh, verse 24, God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind, cattle, creeping things, beasts of the field, each according to its kind. And so it was. Verse 25, God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. He saw that it was good. So when he's created these animals, we're, we're told here that it, uh, animals of the field and, and animals that creep on the earth, uh, there's animals that uh, creep on the earth that give me the creeps. I was just taking a hike the other day and I saw a rattlesnake and I don't like those, don't like them. And there are uh, parts of the curse that we see, but initially all of these things, in fact, uh, Satan comes as a serpent and talks to Eve. It's fascinating. And evidently it was not a threatening uh, type of animal, the serpent at that point, because the curse had not been put on it. Well, what we find now is that these animals were also created, though, for our use. And I, I'm all for being kind to animals. I, I believe that's very important. But to equate an animal with man who's made in God's image is, is not what the Bible teaches. These were made for our enjoyment and also for our use. Now, um, I'm glad that somebody figured out how good cattle taste. Uh, if you're a vegetarian, uh, I, I feel bad for you because there's nothing better than a barbecue steak. That's one of the best things in the world. And what, what is enjoyable about it is not only the barbecue flavor, how about that smell? Now, why is it that that smell of that barbecue steak or hamburger, I'm, I'm hungry, I could go down a whole list right now. How, why is it that that has such an important part of the enjoyment? Because God knew you would like that. He knew that. <laughs> he knew that you would enjoy the smell of flowers, for instance. I mean, I was just out here by my office. We have a jasmine that's growing here that my wife planted a few years ago, and it is just the most aroma uh, going into the air around here. It just fills it. Why is that? Well, because God created that not just for nothing. He created it because he knew I would enjoy that. He knew you would enjoy that. So from the very first chapter of the Bible, here's what we're seeing. Not only are we dealing with a powerful God, not only does God display his power and his majesty in the creation, but he's also in the creation showing that he's a loving God. Let's go to verse 26, Genesis 1, 26, because I want you to see something incredible. We now come to one of the most important parts of creation. God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So look, look at that. After God makes this wonderful place, this earth with all of this intention and all of this beauty and all of these things that are so enjoyable, he now creates man in his image to enjoy these things. And this word where it says for them to have dominion, I, I feel it's an, an unfortunate thing that a lot of Christians, in fact, um, don't steward our planet better. Now, I, I'm not a, one of these kind of people that I, I, I don't feel like this planet's falling apart. We're, 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 we've got some issues, but God made this planet pretty strong, and, and he knows what he's doing. 
But I, I want to say more than just on the environmental side of things. How about on the enjoyment side of things? To enjoy. Uh, I, so many people I know that uh, live in this area where we live here in Southern California. And if you're watching this and you're up somewhere north in the cold, I, I, I'll come ski with you. But I'm glad I live in a warm place. And we have all these gorgeous places to go visit. We've got the ocean. We've got mountains, deserts. I, I know people that they don't even hardly get out of their house. Well, I don't think that's stewarding the environment very well. I think you need to go out and enjoy what God created. But let, listen to this. It says that we're going to make, God says, by the way, the plural nature of God there is very important for you to understand. It's not three different gods, but three different parts of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We'll come back to that in, in a couple more lessons and explain that a little deeper but here's what he says we're going to make man in our image in other words god made you knowing what you would like knowing what would touch your heart he knew what would cause you to cry he knew the kind of dog you would like he knew the kind of smells you would enjoy just think for a moment with me think of food again i i, I know I, I told you i was hungry but all the delicious things that you've eaten why are those delicious to you because you're created in God's image and he knows what you like he knows that you'll enjoy things that that can be savored and smelled and looked at now my dog Bella I like her she's a good dog she's not the sharpest tool in the shed but she's a good dog she seems to be uh, a born-again dog, by the way. She doesn't bite, be and she wants me to always pray over her food. Uh, literally, she will not eat until we pray. It's the funniest thing. Anyhow, but w w when Bella gets food, I don't ever hear Bella go, Whoa, that's the best dog food I've ever eaten in my life. You don't hear her. But, but uh, I'll tell you what, I, I heard my friend the other day when we were, at, we were at a new little taco stand here in Escondido, and we got some, now this may kind of gross you out, but we got some what they call cavesa tacos. It's made with the, the meat that comes from the skull of the cow. Oh, I know it sounds gross, but it's delicious, delicious. And I heard my friend, he was eating one, and he goes, mmm, 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 mmm. Why is that? Because he's created in God's image. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? I know this is such an important thing for you to get a hold of because... Some of the things we take for granted, God didn't. He didn't take them for granted. How, how about if you live here in Southern California, we, we have these beautiful flower fields. For instance, over in Carlsbad, right on the ocean, they have the flower fields there that they grow these flowers called ranicolas. Oh, I mean, the colors, it, it, it is just the most beautiful thing in the world. And how can you drive by those flowers and not at least look. I mean, I don't care if you're into plants or not. That's going to catch your eye. How, why is that? Because God knew you would enjoy that. He knew that we would have senses that would be stimulated by certain things. Now, think of, of sense and smells. Uh, we haven't talked a whole lot about that. But when you smell something, whether it's a barbecued steak or a flower, you're doing that because God gave you that ability to discern things, to discern smells, to discern tastes. How about sounds? I, I was just thinking of some of the sounds that touch me uh, and kind of get, get a, a blessing to me. Um, in the morning, as the sun's coming up, all the little birds, especially this time of the year, they're all getting ready, they're nesting, getting ready to have their own little families and whatever. Uh, in fact, we had a little hummingbird build a nest. I don't know if you've ever seen a hummingbird nest, but it's a fascinating little thing. It looks like a cocoon. And these little hummingbirds are out there getting fed by their mama, and you can hear the little chirpings and the noise that the hummingbird makes, and they're kind of territorial, by the way. Um, you got to watch out for them. I don't, I've never been hit by one, but they come close. But... All of those little sounds, birds. How about how about the sound of the water at the ocean, the waves coming up on the, uh, uh, just crashing up on onto the sand. Beautiful. In fact, they have recordings of that, so it helps you sleep. The sound of rain. We've had that recently. What a blessing that is. Um, how about a gentle stream, of just water trickling down? Can you can you 
picture that in your mind and can you think about that sound that it, it just brings a calming effect it's beautiful that is not an accident that was intended because God knew you would like it that's how much he knows about you I, I was thinking about the sounds of music um, different instruments that I enjoy uh, my family's very musical. My sons uh, write songs. My wife writes songs. Uh, a lot of our, our team here are very musical. And I hear some of the music that they write and they, they play. Uh, how is it I have the capacity to even enjoy that? And then on top of that, that we could use these music, uh, these, these wonderful songs and use the music to worship God. <laughs> that, that's not a creative thing that man came up with. That God intended that. He knew we would enjoy singing songs about him, and he enjoys listening to them. What a powerful thing. So what am I telling you? Well, this is love from the very first chapter, and I'm looking forward to sharing these next few weeks with you. Um, when you're going through the faith builders, you're going to learn things that will absolutely strengthen your walk with the Lord. But nothing will make your faith any stronger than what I'm sharing right now, is that you have a God who loves you, wants you to know it, and one day we're going to all be with him. He wants to be with us. Isn't that encouraging? So God bless you, and I look forward to being with you next time.